You ever have one of those days where you just know something is off? That was me last Friday. The sun was setting, casting long shadows over our quiet suburban neighborhood. The air was cool, almost too perfect, like the calm before a storm. Then Jake, my ten-year-old son, burst through the front door, his face lit up like he'd won the lottery. Mom, look at the gift Mr. Carson gave me. He held up a small wooden box, grinning from ear to ear. Now, let me tell you about Mr. Carson. He's our elderly neighbor who always seemed to have a dark cloud hanging over him. He's lived alone ever since I moved in, and his glare could make a thunderstorm seem like a sunny day. So, seeing my son with something from Mr. Carson set off alarm bells in my head. Jake, honey, did Mr. Carson say what's in that box? I asked trying to keep my voice steady. It's a treasure box. Mr. Carson said it's a special surprise and that I should open it as soon as I get home, Jake said, bouncing on his heels. Every instinct screamed at me to throw that box away, but the joy in Jake's eyes held me back. I didn't want to dampen his excitement. All right, let's see what's inside, I said, gesturing to the box. Jake pried open the lid, and before I could blink, a swarm of tiny, wriggling insects spilled out, scattering in every direction. I screamed, jumping back. Jake's eyes went wide with a mix of horror and fascination. I swatted at several bugs that were crawling on Jake's arms, knocking them to the floor. The insects moved quickly, disappearing into the corners and crevices of our living room. What the hell? I didn't mean to yell, but the words flew out. I don't know, Mom. I thought it was treasure. Jake's voice trembled, tears welling up. I forced a smile and took a deep breath, trying to calm the rising panic. It's okay, baby. It's not your fault. Let's just get these things under control. I took off one shoe and gestured to Jake to do the same. Let's hunt down those bugs. Jake gave me a small smile, easing some of my guilt for yelling. We hunted bugs until dinner time, but didn't find many. It seemed they were all hiding. After sending Jake off to bed, I spent a few hours setting traps and spraying insecticide, convinced this was just a cruel prank. But over the next few days, it became clear this was more than a simple pest problem. Soon, the insects were everywhere. It didn't matter how many died from the insecticide and traps I'd placed because there always seemed to be more. They were multiplying faster than I could manage. The situation was spiraling, and so was my anxiety. Then they started biting Jake. Mom, it itches, Jake whined, scratching red welts on his arms. Why won't they go away? I don't know, sweetie, I said, my voice cracking. I had to do something. This couldn't go on. Driven by sheer desperation and anger, I marched over to Mr. Carson's house. He opened the door, looking as sour as ever. What do you want? He barked. Mr. Carson, what the hell did you give my son? I snapped, my fists clenched. A slow, sinister smile spread across his face. Revenge, he said simply. Your family is living on my land. Land that was stolen from my family when the city sold it. I'm just taking back what's mine. I stood there, stunned. You think you can just drive us out with bugs? Are you insane? His eyes gleamed with a mix of satisfaction and malice. I don't think, young lady. I know, and it's working, isn't it? I felt violated and powerless. How could someone be so heartless? You're sick, I spat, turning away before I did something rash. I stormed back home anger pulsing through my veins like a ticking time bomb. I knew I had to get this under control, but every step I took felt heavier with the weight of our predicament. By the time I reached our front door, the adrenaline had drained, leaving a hollow pit of fear and frustration. My house had turned into a scene from a horror movie. When I entered, several bugs skittered away across the carpet, too fast for me to stomp them. Jake was sitting on the couch, scratching his arms raw, looking utterly miserable. Mom, I can't sleep, he said, tears welling up in his eyes. They keep biting me. 
my heart shattered. Seeing my son in such distress because of that twisted old man made my blood boil. I know, sweetheart, I said, scooping him up in my arms. We can't stay here anymore. It's not safe. Packing our things was like trying to outrun a nightmare. Every bag I filled, I could see tiny critters trying to sneak in. I felt like I was losing my mind, but I had to stay strong for Jake. This wasn't just about escaping bugs. It was about protecting my child from a malicious neighbor who had crossed every line. Where are we going, Mom? Jake asked, his voice small and scared. To Aunt Liz's, just for a while, until we figure things out, I replied, trying to sound confident. But inside, I was crumbling. We loaded the car with whatever essentials we could salvage. As I looked back at our house one last time, I felt a pang of guilt and sorrow. This was supposed to be our haven, and now it was a battleground we were forced to abandon. At my sister's place, the relief was immediate, but incomplete. Liz welcomed us with open arms, not asking too many questions, just providing the comfort and support we desperately needed. That first night, as I lay in the guest room holding Jake close, I couldn't help but replay the events over and over in my mind. How had I let it get this bad? Mom, are we ever going back home? Jake whispered in the dark. I took a deep breath, fighting back tears. I don't know, Jake, but I promise we'll find somewhere safe. Somewhere better. The following days were a blur of phone calls, house hunting, and battling with my regrets. I should have acted sooner. The guilt was a constant companion, whispering in my ear that I had failed as a mother. But every time Jake looked at me with trust and love, I found the strength to push forward. Then, the neighborhood gossip started. Mrs. Anderson, our nosy but well-meaning neighbor, called me one afternoon. Shirley, you wouldn't believe it. Mr. Carson's house is swarming with those bugs now. Serves him right, the old coot. Karma, huh? I felt a twisted sense of satisfaction. Hearing that Mr. Carson was now suffering from his own malicious plot was like a balm to my wounded pride. I couldn't help but smile, just a little. Thanks for letting me know, Mrs. Anderson. I guess what goes around really does come around. The news spread quickly. Mr. Carson, the man who had tried to ruin us, was now trapped in his own nightmare. It didn't change what we went through, but it did provide a bittersweet sense of justice. As the days turned into weeks, Jake and I started to rebuild. We found a small, cozy apartment on the other side of town. It wasn't perfect, but it was ours. Jake started school, made new friends, and slowly the shadow of our old home faded. One evening, as we unpacked the last of our boxes, Jake looked up at me. Mom, do you think we're safe now? I kneeled, pulling him into a hug. Yes, Jake, we're safe and I'm going to make sure it stays that way. No more Mr. Carsons, no more bugs, just us, moving forward. We settled into our new routine, the memories of the past still lingering, but no longer defining us. Every night, as I tucked Jake into bed, I reminded myself of the promise I made, to be vigilant, to protect, and to never let fear or malice take hold of our lives again. In the end, we found hope in each other, in the small victories of everyday life. And as we built our new life, brick by brick, I knew we were stronger for what we had endured.